In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Discuss how to track and report the flow of labor in a process cost system. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So if you see a discussion question like this or an essay question like this, we want to pick out the key topics here. We want to track and report the flow of labor. So we're looking at labor and we're looking at a process cost system. So when we consider a process cost system, we're typically thinking of a system for a manufacturing type company. Usually manufacturing companies that will be producing or making inventory usually use one of two systems or a hybrid of both the process cost system or a job cost system we here focusing in on the process cost system process cost system a way that we're going to be tracking the uh, raw materials uh, that will then go through to the finished goods that will then be sold in the process cost system for a manufacturing company we're also going to be focusing in on the labor so we're considering how does how do we track labor related to a process cost system so when considering labor for the process cost system uh, we kind of have to start with the raw materials because that's the beginning point of the process cost system and think about the flow we're visualizing the flow of the materials as they go from the beginning to the end process where they're in finished goods and then ultimately sold where we finally makes make income on it or report it as cost of goods sold so the first thing we do of course when we make things is we're gonna we're gonna buy it we're gonna buy the materials we buy the materials and then we process that material into the work in process typically. So now we have the work in process. We're starting to work on our on our uh, stuff, on our inventory. And then we have to include on that the, the things that are going to be conversion type costs, which will include the labor. So labor is going to be a conversion. It's going to be us converting the raw materials to the finished goods. So we're going to be working on uh, the raw materials in the conversion process. And as we do that, we'll track the amount of work that's being done by process. So we'll be in the process and we'll track the work by process. We'll process payroll. So you can think of the payroll being a similar process, but normal payroll, you would think that we would debit payroll expense and credit the uh, payroll payable or cash. That would be simplified, not talking about payroll taxes or anything here. But if we're talking, if we're making inventory, then the work, the direct labor, when we process payroll, isn't going to debit payroll expense. It's going to be put into the inventory, into the work in process. So that's going to be the key point here. So the, so the, the inventory, the labor that's direct to a process, we're going to debit uh, and increase the work in process to the applicable process that the people are working on. So that's going to be an increase to work in process, credit cash or with, with a debit, and then we'll credit cash or or uh, wages payable and then any indirect items that we don't know which process to put it in for labor we can then debit the overhead account and then apply out the to the proper uh, location for, for from overhead for indirect labor and then of course once we're once we've completed the process it's going to go from to however many processes are there if there's more than multiple work in processes accounts, it's going to go out of one work in process to, to the second work in process. And then finally, at some point, it'll go out of work in process altogether and go into finished goods. At that point in time, we'll have th three items involved that we think about in inventory, typically the materials, the labor that we've included, the conversion of the labor, and then using the conversion cost of labor, and then the uh, factory overhead. And then we'll move that out to finished goods with a with a credit to work in process and a debit to finished goods so now it's like inventory it's ready to sell and it includes at that point of course the labor in the finished goods inventory then we finally sell it at some point and we take it out of the finished goods crediting finished goods and debiting cost of goods sold as we make the sale the other side of course being sales increasing revenue increasing and 
um, the debit going to the accounts receivable or cash.